Greetings, New Mount Zion family and visitors. Welcome to another virtual Sunday School class from the Cross Comprehensive Review of Sacred Scripture. Let us pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We come before your holy presence, Lord God, with thanksgiving in our hearts, thanking you for all of your blessings. We thank you, Father, for the hope of salvation that we have by faith in your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank you, Father, for your goodness, your grace, and your mercy. We thank you, Father, for your word. May your word be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. As we prepare to study your word, we ask that you will prepare our hearts and forgive our sins. May we respond in obedience as we are led by the Holy Spirit. We pray for understanding of your word. Lord God, we ask that you will bless this class as we exalt the name of Jesus. We pray that you will bless and strengthen the under shepherd of this church, that you would bless his family, our church family, and the body of Christ, so that we may be a blessing to someone in need. We thank you, we praise you, and we give you all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The date is March the 3rd in the year 2024. To our visitors, our senior pastor, Rev. Larry L. Roundtree II, welcomes you to the New Mount Zion Church family where we are with God's grace, changing the world through the love of Christ one soul at a time. This quarter's church and home theme is Revive Us Again, O Lord. Revive means to live and to live anew. This is only possible through God's Word and His Spirit. As you come to Him, the living stone, rejected by men but chosen by God and precious to Him, you also like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. 1 Peter, the second chapter, verses 4 through 5. I am Deacon Keith Poe, and I will be reviewing today's lesson. Hallelujah! Thine the glory, revive us again. As the words to the familiar chorus of revive us again echo the theme of this quarter, may our souls be rekindled as we study lessons on the people of God and their creator. Today's lesson scripture, Jude, verses 17 through 25. Our lesson focus, trust in Jesus to sustain your faith. Throughout history, mankind has been in need of revival. The Hebrew word for revive is kaya, C-H-A-Y-A-H, defined in the Hebrew Greek Key Study Bible, to live to exist, to enjoy life, to live anew, to recover, to be well, to make alive, to enliven, to animate, to quicken, to preserve, to refresh, to rebuild, to restore life, only comes from a relationship with God. What He desires most of all is a people willing to come to him with their need for revival. If my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. 
Second Chronicles, the seventh chapter, verse 14. Jeremiah and Elijah were men used by God to point the people to the source of true revival, our Creator, God Himself. We are in Unit 1, Faithful versus Faithless, with the first of five lessons, Sustaining Our Faith, with Lesson 1. Watch Out Jude refused to tread lightly in his letter to the New Testament believers. He wrote with strong convictions, telling the developing church to stand firm in Christ. The congregation needed to be prepared for the opposing forces. Enemies hung in the background, ready to pounce, insisting on teaching principles contrary to Christian doctrine. He urged his brothers and sisters in the faith to embrace endurance stay close and lean hard on the Lord, confident of his strength to uphold. Jude called the opposers of Christ's truth scoffers, verse 18. He described the agitators as men who walked according to their own fleshly lustful and prideful desires. They held up false agendas pushing away truth. Inwardly, they constantly sang the mantra, We right, you wrong, refusing to listen to the Holy Spirit. What to do? Jude then explained how to live in response to false teachers. Number one, keep in God's love through staying true to the faith and praying in the Spirit, verse 21. 2. Stay merciful to those who are doubting, verse 22. And 3. Hastily save others from evil, in effect, snatching them from the fire and ensure you don't get dragged into their evil with them. Verse 23 Benediction Jude concluded with a benediction often heard at the end of church services. In effect, Jude is reminding his hearers that God is capable, adequate, and you are in his constant care. He is safely guiding you home to heaven. With great pleasure, the father tends to his own. The ending doxology explodes with God facts. He rules over all people and things. These characteristics prevail presently and in the future because of what God has done through the Lord Jesus. He is a Christian's foundation to stand on. Feel his strength beneath your feet. Hallelujah! Section 1 is our life need and is intended for small group discussion. Realize we cannot sustain our faith through our efforts alone. After reading the narrative, Sustaining Our Faith in Your Student Book, notice question one. What are some life situations that have tested and tried your faith? For question one, you might mention sickness, injuries, relationship problems, or financial issues. Less dramatic situations can also try our faith, such as hearing of spiritual failures in others, working at an uninspiring job, or struggling with feelings of anxiety. 
Question 2. Who are some of the examples in Scripture that most inspire you to persevere in challenging times? In question two, you could name any character of Scripture who persevered under trial. Hebrews chapter 11 is a good place to look for ideas. And question three. What are some ways you've tried to keep your own faith strong? How well have these worked for you? For question three, examples may include reading the Bible, prayer, worship, meditation, fellowship with other Christians, or works of service. You might think of other inspirational books you have read or stories of faith you have heard that has helped you keep going when you felt like giving up. Some might consider the faith building benefits of contemplating nature, performing music, or being involved in other creative arts. These methods fall short of doing all you need so you still need help from others and especially from Jesus. Section 2 is our Bible learning. Discover what the Bible says about faith. Jude, Jesus' brother. Historically, the author of the book of Jude has been recognized as the brother of James and half-brother of Jesus Christ, verse 1. This historical fact plays into how readers understand the heart behind Jude's sensitivity and compassion for those prone to falling away from Christ. Jesus' brothers once failed to believe in him, accusing him of insanity. Mark the third chapter, verse 21, and verses 31 through 35. And Jude likely had his previous life in mind when he encourages his audience to have compassion on those falling away from the faith. Jude's history as a doubter gives his exhortation to show compassion a personal touch. Jude's audience must remember that no one is too far from Jesus. They should remember Jude as an example for Jesus' half-brother was once a doubter transformed into a servant of Christ through God's compassion. Keep Yourselves Our scripture lesson begins with Jude verses 17 through 23 from the King James Version. But, beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how that they told you there should be mockers in the last time, who should walk after their own ungodly lusts. These be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the spirit, but ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And of some have compassion, making a difference. Verse 23 And others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Jude warned his audience that some would sneak into the church and cause division and make a mockery of the faith. Because of them, you need to build up your faith, pray, Stay in God's love and wait 
for Jesus' mercy. Show compassion to those who are doubting, but don't fall for the false teachers yourself. Once you have read the commentary of the previous verses, notice question four. What are the warnings found in verses 17 through 19? Jude warns the Christians to remember that scoffers will infiltrate their churches. If Christians recall the predictions of the apostles that these people would come, they would be on guard to watch out for false teaching that leads to godless living. Question 5. What are the three ways Christians keep themselves in the love of God? In verse 21, Jude exhorts the Christians to keep themselves in the love of God. The actions associated with this exhortation are descriptions of how Christians can keep themselves in the love of God. Jude encourages believers to intentionally build themselves up by diligently studying the holy faith, praying according to the guidance of the Holy Spirit, and eagerly looking for the day when Jesus will come back. And question six. How should Christians interact with false teachers and mockers? While Christians should seek to identify false teachers, God's people must also strive to have compassion on those who are sympathetic to the false teaching that leads to ungodly living. The goal should be to persuade everyone with grace and gentleness. Nevertheless, Christians should be careful not to fall into sin one helping others trust Jesus. Last Times In Jewish thought, history could be divided into two ages, often called the present age and the age to come. Jews believed the Messiah would usher in the age to come. Christians who know Jesus as the Messiah recognize that the age to come has already broken in on the present age. But the final age hasn't entirely come. That awaits the second coming of Christ. Jude believed that, in a sense, he was living in the last times when scoffers would arise. Jude 18 they disputed God's laws, preferring instead to follow their own ungodly desires. Keep The King James Version uses the English word keep in verses 21 and 24. In verse 21, Jude's audience is encouraged to keep themselves in the love of God. In verse 24, Jude's audience is reminded that God is the one who is ultimately able to keep them from stumbling. While keep in verses 21 and 24 are two different Greek words, the meaning of the word keep is essentially the same in both verses. Jude's exhortation to the Christians to keep themselves is only possible if Christians trust in the power of the God who is able to keep them from stumbling. If Christians choose to trust in their own strength or intellect, they have no hope. Their ability to keep themselves is not from within, but from above. Therefore, Jude concludes 
this letter by encouraging them with this doxology that God is the one who is able to keep them. Nevertheless, the exhortation remains that Christians must trust in Jesus who is able to sustain their faith until they see him face to face. God keeps you. Jude verses 24 through 25. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Verse 25. To the only wise God our Savior be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen. Give praise to God who is able to keep you from stumbling. He will bring you to himself without fault and with great joy. He has all glory, majesty, and authority through our Lord Jesus Christ. Question 7. Who has the power to keep Christians from stumbling? Jude writes in the concluding verses that God has the power to keep Christians from stumbling to present them faultless before his presence. Jude exhorts Christians to keep themselves in the love of God. But the only way they can keep themselves in the love of God is by putting their faith in God who has the power to keep them from stumbling. Question 8. What will Christians experience in God's presence? Jude writes that Christians will experience great joy in this life and the life to come. The beloved's joy stems from the assurance that God is able to keep Christians from stumbling in order to present them faultless. And question 9. What attributes of God are listed in verses 24 through 25? Jude's doxology includes several attributes of God. His steadfast love toward the saints, his glory, his majesty, his pre-existence, and his preeminence. Glory, majesty, authority, pre-existence, and preeminence. We will now share three Bible extras. Number one, dealing with confused believers. Though Jude was harsh toward the false teachers, he was gentle towards believers who had been confused by the teachers. He advised the mature believers to show mercy toward those who were wavering. Sometimes when sinners refuse to repent, the best course is one of tough love. But in this case, Jude judged that a light touch was needed. The believers could show waverers the truth, then forgive them and welcome them back into full church fellowship. By doing so, they could rescue some, like snatching a piece of wood out of a fire before it could burn. Dealing with sinners always carries risk. The restorers can be drawn into sin themselves. Thus, Jude advised his readers to maintain a healthy respect for the danger presented by the sinfulness they were dealing with. Just as corrupted flesh can stain the clothing that covers it, so the sin inspired by false teachers could affect those who come in contact with it. Jude's advice can come in handy for us, too, when we are trying to help sinners turn from their sin. With God's help, we can lead one another to purer lives in His sight. But as we do so, we ought to keep in mind our own weaknesses. Trusting in Christ allows us to take the focus 
off of our own lives and build affection for God. Jude's concluding doxology rightly points his readers to sustain their faith by putting their trust in Jesus Christ, their only Savior. Number 2. No Stumbling Bible commentator Warren Wearsby says, Knowing the purpose Jude had in mind when he wrote this letter, the doxology takes on even greater significance. Jude was reminding his readers of the greatness of Jesus Christ. If only they could catch that, they would never be led astray by false teachers. The believer who keeps himself in the love of God, Jude, verse 21, caught up in the glories of the Savior, will never want to turn to Satan's substitutes. You don't have to stumble. And number three, the benediction. In discussing the well-known benediction that concludes the book of Jude, verses 24 and 25, Wearsby points out these important characteristics of the Lord. Glory is the sum total of all that God is and all that God does. Everything about him is glorious. The glory of man fades as the mown grass, but the glory of God goes on eternally. Majesty means greatness, magnificence. Only God is great. When we praise God, we praise the most magnificent person in the universe. He is not simply king. He is king of kings. He is not simply Lord. He is Lord of lords. Dominion has to do with God's sovereignty and rule over all things. The Greek word means strength, might, but it carries the idea of complete control over all things. Power means authority, which is the right to use power. All authority belongs to Jesus Christ. Matthew, the 28th chapter, verse 18 including authority over the powers of darkness. Ephesians, the first chapter, verses 19 through 23. As we yield to him, we share his authority and accomplish his will. Someday, all believers will be ushered into God's presence without fault and with great joy. The God who keeps us and welcomes us into his presence is worthy of every honor we can give or even think of. All glory and majesty and power and authority belongs to him forever. And now we will share a window on the word. He holds us together. No matter how much we study scripture, try our best to obey and fellowship with other Christians to find strength and encouragement, we must never lose sight of the fact that God is the one who holds us together. He created us, sent his son to pay for our sins and gave us his Holy Spirit to produce the life of Christ in us. Even if we knew these things in intellectually, we need to let them sink deeply into our hearts emotionally. Music can be a great help in experiencing truth at a heartfelt level. Try singing How Great Thou Art or a recent chorus such as Our God by Chris Tomlin as you think about how great our God is. 
Section 3 is the Bible Application. Identify practical ways to cooperate with Jesus to keep our faith strong. After reading under the heading, When People Bring You Down from Your Student Book, notice questions 10, 11, and 12. Have you felt discouraged by the mockery of other people's convictions we sometimes see in the church, not only out in the world? How can individual Christians and church leaders best manage these types of issues? And give some examples of how you would approach someone whom you believe is being led astray by false teaching or unchristlike behavior. Here's an additional thought that might help with your responses. Do you think we experience more mockery and rejection when we spend time with people and build relationships with them or when we are strangers? Consider this not only with regard to people who are outside the Lord, but also with those in the body of Christ who may not agree with us on all issues. How much would it help or hurt to deepen our relationships with people we might not agree with. Section 4 is our life response. Determine to seek help from Jesus for a healthy, growing faith. We have seen that our faith can be tested by the presence of people in our churches who are not truly devoted to God and scoff at His commands. We have to take measures to keep our own faith strong as well as help rescue other people who may become discouraged and drift away from Jesus. However, in doing so, we need to be careful not to have our own faith weakened in the process. A key takeaway from the entire lesson is that this is not something we can accomplish through our own efforts. We need to remain reliant on God to provide the strength and resilience we need to endure faithfully to the end. I encourage you to read, How Prepared Are You? and answer the questions in the student book. The key verse of our day's lesson is from Jude, verses 20 and 21. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Praise God for his faithfulness, for he has allowed us once again to share in the study of his holy word. As always, we thank you for joining us today and for supporting the Sunday School Ministry of New Mount Zion. We look forward to the blessings God has in store for us this quarter. If it's the Lord's will, we invite you to join us for next week's lesson from 2 Corinthians the 13th chapter, verses 5 through 11. In preparation for the lesson, think about this question. What makes Christianity different from other major world religions? Let us close out our day's session in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your faithfulness knowing that we can trust you in every circumstance. Help us that we will rely on your strength to sustain us through life's challenges. We give you all the glory and all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.